Yo, welcome to the Boys Are Back in Town podcast. I'm Dustin. I'm a huge Giants fan. I'm here with my co-host. Hey, I'm Brett, a uh, big Dallas fan, so, you know, big rivalry, but we love it. We do love it. Adds a lot of banter. Should be good con- content. Okay, so uh, this podcast, we're basically going to cover fantasy, uh, the best fantasy lineups, the best people to pick up off waiver wires, uh Bet stuff like that. You want to jump in on that? Yeah. Um. So I I figure what we get started about today is just talking about that terrible game between Dallas and Giants last night. Um. You know, starting off with how terrible the refing was. It was horrible. I I've never yeah. seen calls that fucking bad. As a Giants fan, that offensive pass interference call during a scramble drill. A scramble drill. <laughs> <laughs> he was running away from, like, eight linebackers. Bro, people were running back and forth. Whenever people are running back and forth like that, it's a, clearly that's not a pick. That's not a pick route. <laughs> I, the, I, the same the same with the tackling the receiver in the end zone for the Giants tackling Dallas receiver. Yeah, no, I, I definitely had sympathy for that one. I was like, that one should have been called. Yeah. I was already hey, mad at the way, refs at that point. We, we called it. We were talking back and forth the whole game. It was just terrible, terrible refing. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> The refs kind of picked who won that game. But thankfully, we started using Zeke some more. And, you know, he's still rushing. Great average. Pollard, you know, nine yards a carry or something like that. Yeah, I would say, let's chime down the Zeke talk real quick. Zeke got a (laughs) touchdown. Cool. Hey, hey. Pollard carried. He brought me back in our Dynasty League. And then Pollard and Lamb brought me back in our Yahoo League. And I did great. The only reason you beat me in our Dynasty League was because of the kicker and your defensive players. And Saquon having an absolute and massive game Saquon. against yeah. your Lawrence Taylor second <laughs> coming of. He was he was sick. He was sick. So don't forget. Michael Parsons oh, was sick. Bro had food poisoning. Bro. <laughs> bro just needed to take a shit. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, but uh, definitely uh, Dallas receivers did not look great. I mean, Lamb ended up looking pretty good, you know. Um, but uh, isn't it crazy to think that we could have kept Amari Cooper with as much cap as we have and not had an extra six-round pick this year? I mean, oh, I mean, <laughs> I think your offense looks good without that true number one because CD plays way better in the slot. He he just does. He he does best against safeties. Yes, yeah. He'll he'll he get locked those... the fuck down. But Noah Brown. <laughs> Noah Brown I, in the first uh, quarter is probably the best re- wide receiver in football. Well, and first quarter, kind of, Noah Brown, that's it. The rest of the game, and silent. Cooper, him and Cooper Rush have been the backups for Dallas for like three or four years. So they've had so much Rappaport together in practice as the second team and in preseason and stuff like that. It makes it just a whole lot easier for them just to have that connection. Right, yeah, that, that definitely does help. That's kind of the way uh, Daniel Jones and... <laughs> Uh, Darius Slayton were for a while, and yeah. then you know Darius Slayton decides that none of our receivers can play football. So I don't even know who's a, who's going to be our starting receivers next week. I have no idea. Couldn't tell you. Yeah, I don't think yeah, Brian Dable could tell you. I think we're picking but, uh, up Alex Bachman off our practice squad, the dude who absolutely torched everybody in the preseason. So that that might be a highlight for us. But <laughs> I, I, for the fact that I am betting props on Richie James. People, half the people I mean, in New York don't even know who the fuck Richie James is. Like, bro, it's sad. Well, it's sad, bro. It's hard to watch. Yeah, I mean, Richie James, Davis Sills, you know, guys like that just come out of nowhere. Talking about people who are coming out of nowhere, these are probably the best waiver wire pickups for this week. Uh, and I'm going to start it off with Khalil Herbert, which in most leagues, in most competent leagues, he's already sitting on someone's bench. But if you can go and trade for this guy before David um, Montgomery is completely ruled out, I think that's going to be your best option. That's what I'm doing. David Montgomery is on my bench. I am definitely going to be hawking for Khalil Herbert. (laughs) Yeah, and uh, I mean, at the same time as Khalil Herbert, Jamal Williams. I mean, for sure, DeAndre Swift, they've said that they're probably going to hold him out till week seven, which is right after their bye. And I think that... He's going to be the only guy other than maybe Craig Reynolds to run the ball. I mean, that's a good Lions offense, you know, along yeah, with uh, really good. <clears throat> yeah. And they don't have to depend on rushing the ball 
Like they literally have weapons in everywhere. And he was and still it's nuts. He was still a flex. Like, yeah, no, he, he still he still got yeah, reps that. in the year. Yeah, he's not yeah. coming in cold by any means. But because um, Swift's having that shoulder issue and then the ankle issue all at the same time, I think it's best that they'll just hold him out because the Lions are winning games. I mean, they don't need him, which hurts me because in my hundred fifty dollar league, I have you know DeAndre Swift. Yeah, Swift. Yeah, definitely. Uh, everyone's top three running back. So I was going to grab him if he was there for me, but luckily he was not. So I kind of <laughs> bailed out there. Um, another guy that I think's on a lot of people's benches that probably needs to be put in the starting position is Chris Olave. Yeah. Um, I think he's the true number one in New Orleans. I, I don't yeah. see anybody else making, getting, <laughs> I think he got 10 targets, 10, 11, 12 targets. And he's just been averaging a crazy amount of targets, so he's definitely going to sneak his way onto my starting roster come Sunday. Yeah, I didn't get any my any part of Chris Olave, and I'm kind of kind of jealous of the people who do. But uh, I mean, also, you know, picking up on the waiver, you got guys like Greg Dortch, um, Cardinals. He's you know just keeps producing. Um, you know, uh, you know. D Hop suspended till week seven. Uh, Rondell Moore's not coming back till week five. Um, AJ Green probably out next week. Um, yeah, and he's washed anyway. I mean, really. Well, um, that's what makes me scared to start Hollywood Brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's putting but, up numbers, I mean, but he's not reliable at yeah, all. Seventeen in anywhere targets but the last slot, week, dude. But he ain't gonna get that every week. No, no. and he can't. Not especially not in the in the wide receiver one um, slot. But Dorch does have 23 targets this year already that's and impressive. that that's a good thing for the cardinals because they're not looking good no no not at all i i would stay far the fuck away from the cardinals yeah and then except to this that, next week i'm actually you know, we'll get there but i yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, I do we'll think there. the cardinals um, are romeo dobbs i mean hey i mean dobbs wide receiver one Doops, dupes dobbs. dobbs is that Doops. how you spell it yeah, I also I, have him I, it's down. It's spelled weird. It's spelled like Dubes, but I think it's said Dobbs. Dobbs, yeah. I think I also have this down. I think he's the number one in Green Bay, and I don't think it's I, I mean, he's got to be. I mean, eight the, targets, the only other guy eight is Christian Watson. and a touchdown. Yeah, no, yeah, he's the guy. Watson, he's the guy. Watson's just fighting injuries. I mean, that's possible. I mean, and Lazard being back, he's a big target. He's that number one. But, I mean, Dobbs is going to be like, you know, the juju to the Antonio Brown, like yeah. Well, I, think I mean, it it's like proven that. that any receiver that Aaron Rodgers feels comfortable throwing to, he's gonna give well, yeah, ten plus targets a week. It, and and he doesn't Watkins, feel comfortable with Watson. Oh, he's grabbing real big with Watkins, man. Well, Sammy Watkins is on IR, missing oh, four weeks. Yeah, did he take out? What happened? I yeah, actually, yeah, I don't. I'm not sure. But down, but I, I saw that today. Yeah, missing four weeks for sure. And you know Randall Cobb's just washed. I mean, what? The See, dude... you say he's washed, but Duke can still catch. Well, yeah, he can catch. Yeah, like but he's, he's not yeah, going to catch go, you know, hundred yeah, yards. So. Yeah, yeah. He ain't gonna catch a slant for a touchdown ever. And then it's Aaron freaking. Anybody connected to Aaron Rodgers is going to be good, but you got to gain his trust. Yeah, you and have to make jobs. Sure. I mean, he's he's already got. I think what sixteen targets this year. Like, yeah, that's, that's quite over a bit. half came last week. <laughs> as yeah. soon as he got a yeah. bigger role in the offense, it was clear that Rodgers trusted him. Yeah, and then uh, I mean, I don't know if you've been paying attention to Russell Gage, um, also kind of like Dobbs and Dorch. Just so many of the starting receivers are just not there. You know, with uh, uh, Mike Evans is coming back this week, which I think will help. Russell it will Gage. help. Russell he had Gage, thirteen for sure. targets. 12 receptions and a touchdown. And that's just, I'm mean, crazy numbers. I mean, and you got Tom Brady as your quarterback and Godwin's still out. Julio's out and probably, I mean, we always saw him last year. He well, played what? The number games. two in that last game with the Bucks was Scotty Miller. Yeah. I they mean, were struggling. Brady had nobody to throw the ball to except for Gage. Uh, so having Mike Evans back, it's the only problem I have with Mike Evans coming back is that Tom Brady forces the ball. To Mike Evans yes. so incredibly yes. hard, which pays off for him 95% of the time. 
but nobody else really gets a target share. Yeah, you don't. I mean, other than Godwin, which I traded for in our Yahoo League. Yeah. Um, I'll be happy to have him when he comes back. But I figure once Godwin comes back, Gage isn't going to be much of anything unless, you know, the hurt often Gage or Godwin or hurt often Evans, you know, get does end up hurt. Russell Gage is there, which had a good if... season last year for Atlanta. Oh yeah, yeah, great season. Um. But I, I was still going to stay way away from him, even though he went to a way better offense. There's just, he's way too wishy-washy. I don't like players like that on my team. I don't like boomer <laughs> bust players. My yeah. whole offense um, is boomer bust, so I can't really say anything. Yeah. Um, and then J.D. McKissick. I mean, it, with certain leagues, like I know our league this year is pretty wide receiver centric, but there's a league I'm in where you can possibly start four running backs. And I mean, J.D. McKissick, PPR, um, I mean, he's a great PPR running back. He's startable. He has 19 targets in the first three games. I mean, that is, I that's mean, minimum 10 points a game. As <clears throat> long as the commanders are trailing in games, he's going to get targets. Because Gibson's always out of the game whenever they're trailing because they're always throwing yeah, the ball. I, I really think anybody should trade high on Gibson. Oh, easily. Because Brian Robinson, I mean, if he's in your, if he's in your free agency, if he's still, available, him grab him right yeah. now and put him on IR. Free spot. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason yeah. to not have him on a roster. I mean, even if you don't have an IR, I mean, grab him, put him in your bench because he will be the starting running back for the. As Washington soon as he's back, because... he's gonna be back. The dude's mad talented, and it was ta- he was going to go top ten in most fantasy drafts. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Maybe top five uh, rounds, maybe not top ten. Yeah. Oh, he top was, ten uh, in keeper leagues, not not in yeah, yeah not not sure. in uh, redraft for, leagues for dynasty, dynasty and stuff. Yeah, that's and what then, I was talking about. But I was like, can you ah, believe how rough the tight end group is this year? I mean, oh man, I'm having sh- struggle starting one guy, let alone even thinking well, about drafted, having two. I drafted Schultz in all my leagues because you can get him in like sixth or seventh round. We had no receivers. Like I'm like Schultz is my guy. And yeah. then, of course, he gets hurt and missed this week. Hopefully be back next week. Hopefully Gallup's back next week, too. But, uh, oh, going from there, uh, Conklin. I mean, uh, he's the tight end three. He has 24 targets, and just the tight end groups are terrible this year. I just, you got to grab Conklin. Yeah, for sure. I think the only, like, good running back, not running back, tight ends that you can play right now are Conklin, Goddard, and maybe sprinkle in a little bit of Hawkinson. I I don't like anybody else. Everybody else other is than the, sure. other than like the top five. Yeah, well, like Kittle, not, yeah, Kittle, Kelsey, yeah. Kittle, Kelsey, Waller, Waller. Uh, no, Andrews. not dude, not even Waller. I'm sorry. I, well, I'm, he's not doing good right now, but clearly he will. Like you can't not start him. And thankfully, Kyle Pitts is looking good again because oof. Man, that one was, I didn't that was a bomb, dude. People were yeah. cl- going for his head, dude. Like, it, it was not a good look. Um, But uh, definitely, uh, if you're wanting to pick up some defenses, because I know I'm streaming defenses, I always do. Um, Giants have a pretty easy matchup against the Bears, who are dead last by a lot in passing. and But the rushing is pretty good. Pretty good, but number one running backs down. Yeah, I just I I like Khalil Herbert a lot, but this Giants defense is getting healthy and could be scary. Ajilari's back off of snap count. Um, I think maybe Tibbs is off snap count. It'll be close. I think he'll he'll still play, but he'll be on a on probably a snap count. But yeah, our our and defense then, uh, is coming back and it's it's gonna be a good one. I I like the Lions defense this week. I love uh, the Lions defense this week. Yeah, I, I mean, was thinking about grabbing them, but they're good. already grabbed. Yeah, I was too. Um, and I also like Dallas defense this week. I mean, it's hard Dallas, not to like Dallas Dallas's defense good. all year. Yeah. If you can grab it, them it and looks, keep them, you yeah. gotta. No you matter who they're to. playing yeah. against, I mean, I mean, even if they get points thirty points the dropped on them, they're still gonna. As, as yeah. long as your sacks, league plays sacks, interceptions, any sort of turnovers, yes. you, they're averaging like four or five sacks a game right now. It's insane. Yeah, yeah first first couple weeks it was Mike Parsons. Last night it was Marcus Lawrence. It looks good, um, but definitely start start those, grab those if you're streaming. You know they're not very high owned. The Dallas is a little bit, but 
he was still available in our league last week. Mm-hmm. And um, but I like the starts. Um, you can go through some starts and sits. Um, I like the starts of uh, Daniel Jones. Um, crazy rushing upside, and of course That's Chicago's true. defense has not been that great. I mean, if you're you know struggling like me, I'm starting Daniel Jones this week because. I traded away Hurts for Justin Jefferson and traded up for Dak, and Dak's hurt right now, so I'm just streaming, and I tried starting Carson Wentz last week because he had two good weeks in a row, but uh, that didn't play out for me. So um, I like Daniel Jones a little bit other than, I mean, uh, that was on the waiver for me, um, but I think he could be pretty good. Um, and, of course, you got to start Khalil Herbert. It is his time to shine. Yep, um, 100% agree. Yeah, Jamal Williams, I mean – you got to start him. I mean, and then uh, receiver, I couldn't find a lot of guys that I was just full on. Like you got to start other than the obvious, you know, top 24 or something. But yeah, Rashad the guy's Bateman, putting up. Yeah. Yeah. Rashad Bateman, he shit for me last week. But the best thing is um, it's going to be a shootout. Ravens and Bills. I mean, that's going to be a big game. Bills secondary is pretty weak right now. So. I mean, I mean, I know he held Tua to 21 points or something like that, but mm-hmm. still, I mean, that's Tua. <laughs> yeah, people are way too high on Tua right now, man. Yeah. I, I don't know. Tua is just, he, he, yeah, he's making plays, but look at the guys he's got around him. Yeah, I mean, if you had Waddle, Swit, or Waddle Hill, um, sadly, they paid um, Cedric Wilson, you know, from the Cowboys this year, last yeah. year. Um, they paid him pretty decent money, and he's like their fourth string. Like yeah, but I, I mean, mean I don't even think I've seen him on the field. Plays. I have to see him. Yeah. Like wait, he's he's in there some like third downs. He's sprinkled in. I've seen him make a couple yeah. catches and yelled at the TV because they didn't have Hill in. But <laughs> you know how it goes. Um, yeah. And uh, what are your you know um, good starts this so week? So I actually, if you have Etienne, unless it's a keeper league, you need to sell him high right now while he still has any sort of relevancy because if you. James Robinson is the only guy you should be starting from the Jags. Yeah. Um, it, there's I just no reason agree. to start Etienne, man. There's no reason to. He's not He's not putting up the numbers that James Robinson is on the ground. Yeah, for I sure. I mean, I'll field that one. You can, you can, because uh, I'm going to throw out another one. Josh Reynolds, flex play. <laughs> yeah. Um, because yeah, him. He definitely took over Shark, DJ Chark. He took over. Yeah, he, he was literally getting, I think he got maybe seven targets, six or seven. It was up there. I know he, he didn't yeah. have like an insane week, but like literally the, he already has a bunch of, what's the word, Rappaport with yep. um, fucking Jared Goff because of their yeah. time in from, L.A. From the Rams, yeah. yeah. That's why like he already has so much reps with him. He got traded mid-season last year, I think, and I went and picked him up in our dynasty. I was like, oh, that's genius. Like, And then he ended up not doing that well um, because Amon Ross St. Brown was just absolutely just tearing everything. Yeah, he's the guy. Year. Yeah, he's the guy over there in the sun. Uh, but uh, I definitely have some sits, you know, along with uh, um, Etienne and... And I think Robinson both are sits this week for me because they're going to be playing from behind, playing, you know, the Eagles. And oof, that Eagles team is crazy good, and that sucks for us. Yeah, it's um, not a great look for the NFC. Yeah, but uh, you got to sit Justin Herbert this week. You cannot be starting Justin Herbert. He looked okay, but he's hurt. I mean, you can't blame the guy. And I'm assuming that he's not letting them um, give him that shot in his ribs because yeah. do you remember how he started? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Chargers medical staff is probably not the way to go. Yeah. Um, and you know, they got so many injuries. They just lost Slater for the year. Like that's crazy. Um, it's oh torn bicep God. or something. Hold on, dude. And it's just, I, I just don't see Herbert being good for a little while, which is really bad for me as well, because I have Mike Williams in a couple leagues and it just, it's not good. Um, but, uh, also sitting Josh Jacobs. I mean, he's his 60 yards and no touchdowns a game is pretty shitty. Um, but uh, the Broncos defense is actually pretty tough, um, car- kind of carrying their team. Um, they're only allowing 78 rushing yards per game, and Josh Jacobs isn't even getting that anyway. Right. So, I mean, I 
I just assume that they'll be very rough on them. But uh, couldn't really find a receiver to sit this week. I kind of wanted to say Amari Cooper, but man, he scored like 25 points two weeks in a row, and ugh. This one might be uh, my receiver to sit this week is Hollywood Brown. I definitely think he's just the guy that you need to put on the bench and not look back. Uh, Maybe even trade uh, him if you can. Uh, yeah, I mean, trading moving Brown wouldn't be a bad idea, especially since D Hop's coming back soon. Ron, when Rondell Moore comes back, he's super talented, and we didn't get to see it much last year, but I really think we will. And who are the Cardinals playing? The Panthers? I mean, J.C. Horn, guys like that are pretty good, but I, I think they'll still move the ball. But for some reason, I don't know why the Cardinals look so bad. But, I mean. Yeah, I, I'm not um, sure either. Kyler Murray's struggles are definitely depressing. And So, as a Giants fan, do, do should people start dropping Kadarius Tony? Drop Kadarius Tony. I have this on my notes. Whenever Wandale Robinson is healthy, he's going to be a 10 target receiver for the rest of the year. Well, especially game. since Shepard's out for the year. Yeah, there's nobody else. Kenny Galladay is only in there as a distraction at this point. He's not even a part of the offense, and it's pretty it's pretty clear, and it's depressing because I'm a big Galladay guy. I thought Galladay was going to be the turning point in our well, yeah, I had in him our this last year but... in uh, Detroit, and oh man, he did me some good things. Yeah, he almost, I think he he got close to winning he the damn league. Yeah, he, I mean, touchdown monster. But yeah, he, I mean, what was it, like two drops last night? Two Didn't drops on three targets, yeah, it, it was it was pretty bad. Um, yeah. This is definitely going to be one that I think is going to be a great start. I got CEH starting this week. And I've been so hesitant with that three rotation backfield, but Ceh has proved that he is the number one running back for the Chiefs. Yeah, I. Uh, Everyone else just isn't uh, holding up to what he's doing. And only only issue there is that they are playing the Buccaneers. Um, tough defense, um, but they're gonna move the ball no matter what. Right. Uh, Let's see here. Um, so what is it time to drop Darnell Mooney? Um, if you're not high on the Bears offense, drop Darnell Mooney. If oh, you think they I, can turn uh, it around, keep I, him on. I drafted I drafted a lot of Mooney this year and I'm been slowly dropping him in different leagues where I just couldn't hold on to him anymore. You know, I'm dropping him this week for, I put in a waiver bid for, I think it was Dobbs. And then, yeah. It's, yeah, it's I, definitely I, tough I just, to The see Bears him. passing offense is terrible. Yeah, I, I the Bears offense in general right now, besides for their run game, which they're just springing big ones. That's about that you can say. They're getting, yeah. that's three and out, three and out, three and out, spring a 60-yard run, kick a field goal, maybe get a touchdown. And which sucks because I was so high on Justin Fields. Uh, everybody was. Everybody thought yeah, this was going to be his turning point year. Yeah, I was like, I was like, oh, Justin Fields is the way to go. All right, do you want to get into our weekly picks? Hey, we can go picks or the lines, you know, whatever. Um, um, but uh, I really, uh, I think this is a tough week either way for um, just picking games in general. Because yeah, there's just a lot of crazy, you know. I've got. Uh, Dolphins over the Bengals. I also I have just, the Dolphins I, at the money line. I just don't think the, I, I just don't think the Bengals can pull through. I mean, poor Joe Burrow. They revamped his offensive line, and it's terrible. Dallas yep. made him look sad. <clears throat> yeah, so did the Steelers. Uh, the Bengals yeah. just are are not looking good. They have a lot to uh, prove before I pick them in any sort of game wins. Yeah, I mean, they. I think they've got some easy games coming up. Hopefully, get that record up i mean um and then i've got the vikings over the saints you just see that's where we're gonna spread out a little bit i'm taking the saints but i'm taking the saints at the plus five line mm. because i think that game's gonna be decided by a field goal so either way i'm safe yeah um uh, i think Jameis might be feeling better he you know hurt his back um so if Va Jameis is feeling better that game could be a toss-up either way yeah, and taking Saints plus five is a really it's a pretty smart move. Yeah, um, but so. I I'd take the Vikings money line, and 
I like that. Uh, but then I've got the Eagles over the Jags, of course, because easily yeah. the Jags are good, but the Eagles, oh. I'm taking the Eagles, and I'm taking the minus six and a half points. I think they'll cover that easily. I, I think it's going to be a 20-point game. Um, the Jags offense is coming together. Don't get it twisted. They're, they are looking okay. Just the Eagles are probably the best team in the NFC right now. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah. I, Maybe, not happy about maybe it. other than um, the Bills, best team in the NFL. Yeah, um, the Bills maybe. Yeah, but uh, and then saying the Bills, I've got the Bills over the Ravens. I um, also have the Bills over the Ravens I, covering the I three. think it'll be a straight shootout, but the Dolphins got lucky last week beating the Bills. I don't know. I'm not sure what happened. Something happened because I think Devin Singletary got 11 or 10 targets and caught nine balls, yeah. which is ridiculous. Like, Something weird happened. They weren't moving the ball. Diggs wasn't getting catches. Gabriel Davis wasn't getting catches. Anytime you're dumping um, it down nine times a game, that's not a good look for the offense. Yeah, no, especially for Josh Allen. He's got the cannon of an arm. Uh, also a really good look for the Dolphins' defense. can make you pretty confident in the Dolphins going up against the Bengals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then, which going back to, like, I just I don't see a way that the Bengals could beat the Dolphins. I mean... I do believe it'll be a much higher scoring game than the Buffalo Bills because the Bills defense is stouter than the Bengals. Oh, way better. Yep. But uh, and then Steelers over Jets. I I mean, Steelers, they're I mean, I know they're looking bad. Mitch isn't throwing the ball very well, but I mean, they might be playing Zach Wilson this week, which I think is a downgrade. I got the Jets money line. Mm. I think the Jets come through. The Jets offense, especially if they start utilizing Brees Hall, which I think is going to be a league winner. I just didn't want to say it yet. Um, <laughs> I, I think he's going to be that guy. I think if you can trade for him, trade for him. But that the Jets offense is putting up good yards. They're making Joe Flacco look like a baller again. But uh, the offense is so talented. But do you think Zach Wilson can make it better or do you think he's going to drag it down because Flacco's been throwing the ball 50 times a game well I mean as far as arm talent goes if Zach Wilson can't find the open guy then it's just not going to go well because if Joe Flacco if you can honestly sit there and say as a Jets fan that Joe Flacco is the number one quarterback then you should be terrified for next year yes because Zach Wilson just probably isn't your guy and I was never high on Zach Wilson anyway. I he was not the most talented guy in that draft class. No, not not by far. He still went earlier than I think he should have. Yeah. Um, but then I've got uh, my boys over the Washington Commanders. I, mean, I also have the Cowboys covering the three point line. Oh yeah, I easily. I think. I think this game could go one of two ways. Dallas could struggle on offense and we'll still win close game. Or it could be like last year, I think we outscored them 51-17 and 56-20 or something like that. I it just, I don't think they really have a chance. Well, as much as everyone else in the league, well, not in the league, the NFC East is struggling offensively. Two of the struggling teams have really good defenses. One does not. The yeah. Commanders are going to let up 50 points a game for the rest of the year, <laughs> like especially against somewhat talented offenses. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a blowout. Yeah. Um, and then they're just picking up so much steam, too. Like, I mean, we lost week one to the Bucks. It was just a terrible game. Dak even looked bad. And then, you know, beat the Bengals. I think that was just a massive turning point. You know, Super Bowl you know, to losing to Dallas. Yeah, people are saying that, like, they didn't even stand a chance. You know, Cooper rushes in. There's no point in even playing the game. But, yeah, no, he's looking really right. confident. He was slinging the ball 50 yards yeah. downfield to CD. Cooper, like, that's a good Cooper look. Cooper Clutch, man. He's 3-0 and as a Dallas starter. Um, he looks great. It's a good um, look. But then, of course, we've got the Lions over Seattle. I mean, Seattle Not at looked out. pretty good against the Broncos, but that's it. Yeah, I have the Lions covering the four and a half point spread. I think this is going to be at least a touchdown game. 
but there's just no way in hell. Geno Smith is not the guy. He's not the guy. No. no he, had they a, need see, to. he had a decent game in Seattle home opener, but literally that's that's it. Like, yeah, he's no, just not the guy. I, I'm not a fan. Um, and then what a... Uh, Next game? Texans and Chargers. Oh, is that your next game? Yeah. I am taking the Texans. What? Okay. Yep. If if Herbert um, does not play, then I also have the Texans. But okay, if Herbert no, see, plays, see, I'm I think it. it could be different if Herbert doesn't play. I, I think the Chargers could win that game. But I think Herbert's playing scared. Lost his left tackle. I mean, I just, I, I'd be scared. Like, you know, your ribs are hurting. Like, yeah, man, that nice. is a scary game to watch out for. I think if anything, you take the Texans and get take the points. Yeah, so, I, I, I mean, I like the Texans even money line straight up. Um, that they was do have one really of the bets good I was talk to you about here. In a Plus one ninety odds yeah. on the money line. That's a yeah, really good one ninety. I like, I like that. I mean. Um, but, uh, so I'm assuming you, you should, you think the Chargers might be able to win that game? Um, yeah, if Herbert plays, I am taking the Chargers. And if he doesn't play, like I said, I'm switching to the Texans. So it, it, it's, it's, it's the Chargers. I do not like if Herbert is not at the helm. So, yeah, I mean, really, yeah, that's probably, you're probably right. But I mean. Davis Mills looks good. I mean, he is really the best quarterback great. in that draft class. I, I, I he's better than Mac. I, T Law is starting to look good. He's starting he's to come out Zach of his shell, Wilson. and he yeah. definitely got put in a way worse situation than Davis Mills did. But yeah, Davis Mills is is just showing his stuff, man. He's not slowing if, down. If Davis Mills would have went to the Patriots with Bill Belichick, I think they'd have been a playoff team last year. They still would have got blown out by the Bills in the first round. So that's true, but they would have actually made it to the playoffs. They did not, make it to uh, the playoffs last year with Mac. Yeah. Oh. They went. I'm pretty sure they went ten and seven, and then they got like forty one zipped in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that happens. That yeah, you happens. you forget that that game gets played because it yeah. it did not look like a. Yeah, I, I had that game off by halftime. I was done watching it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, of course, we got to go with the Giants over the Bears. Giants yeah. are looking good. Um, Bears are looking awful. Um, if they could hold Khalil Herbert to 80 yards, um, 90 yards, I think, I mean, they'll hold Justin Fields under 100 probably. Maybe the Giants versus notable running backs this year. Christian McCaffrey, they didn't quite hold him to under a high yard count. He still got like 130 yards from scrimmage or something. But they did hold Derrick Henry to like yeah. like a 50-yard game, maybe. Uh, so, I mean, and they held Zeke, but Pollard was the, the star of the show last night. Yeah. I mean, Zeke was efficient, but at the same time, you got to get the yardage totals to me even make any yeah stats sense. don't lie yeah but yeah and i have the uh, giants covering the three point spread oh yeah i think that game will probably be somewhere 31 to maybe 10 um, well i don't think we'll score 31 points but i appreciate the i i i, I do <laughs> believe the wishful thinking that saquon barkley will destroy the bears defense oh yeah he's gonna absolutely torch them but yeah I, I just I don't see them I don't see it being a close game and if it is then the Giants may have some trouble on their hands in the next couple weeks. So this next game I actually do like the money line and it's gonna be a toss up but I like the Cardinals money line over the Panthers. Cardinals over the Panthers. I also was one of my bets. They have the Panthers I... as the favorites but I just don't see how. The Panthers I lost to my Giants, man. I Panthers are if maybe if they used McCaffrey how they should and DJ Moore. I mean, DJ Moore is 
like starting to turn into a droppable guy, which is crazy. Yeah, the, there's the only probably wide receiver that you can think about flexing if you're really desperate is Robbie Anderson. I, I would not yeah, even yeah. think about starting DJ Moore. No, yeah, not even and close. I can't stand starting Robbie Anderson. No, he sucks. Yeah, Dude's and uh, yeah, that's another one of my big bets that I really like. Um, but uh, um, Browns over the Falcons. I I just don't see the Falcons beating the double-headed backfield of Chubb and Hunt. Nope, and not even close. Cooper and and Joku had a breakout game. And, and Joku true, is a good tight end to maybe maybe flex him out this week, test him out. Yeah, I mean, but <clears throat> could possibly win you a week. Falcons. Falcons do have good corners, but Cooper is known to beat good corners. So the route running is just really good. Um, but uh, yeah, I do like the Browns over the Falcons. Um, I also like the Browns. I'm going to take them covering the spread of one and a half points. I don't know how they got that lucky. They're really just dogging Jacoby Brissett. I know. <laughs> For no reason. He's leading um, that offense to W's. Yeah, can give that man some respect. Yeah. And then I've got the Colts over the Titans. For sure. I also I have mean, the Colts over the Titans, and I'm having them when, cover the spread of three and a half. When Matt Ryan has Michael Pittman, it's a completely different team. It's nine day. Uh, yeah, like no Michael Pittman. Matt Ryan looks terrible. He yeah. has to have that number one receiver that he can throw to ten times in a game, like he did Julio for so many years. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. Whenever they have to facilitate that offense through Jonathan Taylor, I think Jonathan Taylor's a great running back. He's a must-start all the time. But if they don't have a number one receiver to take away from the run game, there's not a whole lot of running backs that can carry an entire offense with nobody else. to Like, if you're stacking the box the entire game, you're it's just not going to happen. You're not going to carry an yeah. offense. And that's what happened, what, two weeks ago? They got shut out, so. Yeah. And then... I have the 38-year-old Aaron Rodgers beating the Patriots. See, now that one, with how big of a gap the points are, I'm taking the points on the Patriots. Hey, you just got to remember, no Mac Jones. Yeah, but that's also a blessing. You know, like yeah, sometimes there's a little bit their of a... backup. <laughs> it's Brian Hoyer. So you just got to be careful with... I mean, it's Brian Hoyer. But here's the deal, but... man. The... The Patriots defense is not going to let up that many rushing yards to Jones and A.J. Dillon like the Bears did. The Bears rolled yeah. over and died, but whenever the whenever the run game doesn't work, the offense, the Packers offense does not look near as efficient. Well, if they're yeah, getting like, put in third and fives, third and sixes, they're not converting. No, and that's where they will have to have Romeo Dobbs actually show out Alan yep. Lazard start playing good because I mean when Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon aren't playing like just god tier that offense isn't moving yeah it it's bad offense yeah because just poor receiving play like you can have the best quarterback in the world but if your receivers can't get open there's there's not a whole lot you can do yeah um but yeah, definitely Packers over the Patriots for me. Um, you got Patriots over the Packers. I don't have the Patriots over the Packers. I had the Patriots just the with Patriots the points. The I, I like, I like, I just think the ten points is gonna be enough. Like, I, I don't think the Patriots will keep it. I think they'll keep it close enough because I don't. I think they'll hold the offense in check. Yeah, and uh, and the Patriots can get downfield and kick field goals to keep it close. So that's true. They all Ramondre them, Stevenson can run them. with the best of them. So hey, I like Ramondre Stevenson. I picked him up in our league. Thankfully, someone dropped him. I don't know why, but Some I've been high on Ramondre Stevenson. He's um, definitely a guy, man. He's definitely a guy yeah, you gotta watch same. out for. Yeah, uh, but then uh, definitely. I think the Raiders could beat the Broncos this week. Yeah, I also had the Bron uh I have the Broncos losing. I have the Raiders covering the two and a half point spread. I I don't like the Broncos. I don't think they're a good football team. I, I don't I don't know why, but you would think if you brought in Russell Wilson, 
But also, Russell Wilson hasn't looked that great, even like last year. But, I mean, he has had no supporting cast on the offensive line. And he came over to a good offensive line, um, good defense, great good wide weapons. receivers. Great weapons. Yeah, and I just, I just don't know why he's not playing there. Why don't I? And it's maybe because it's a new offense. It's still new everything. But still, they should be past that by now. I mean, they're NFL players. Yeah, it's coming up onto week four. There's no excuse for a veteran quarterback to not be able to pick up an offense like that. He's had to pick up, like, what, four offenses so far in his career? He's yeah. been through a couple offensive coordinators. There's just no reason why <clears throat> he can't pick up an offense. There's no reason why the receivers on the offense look clueless. They have no idea what's going on. And that's I was big on Cortland, Cortland Sutton before the year. I thought he was going to be a guy to watch out for, and I'm glad I'm glad someone took him before I could get him. Blessing yep, in disguise. Um, but then I've got the Chiefs over the Bucks easily. I, <laughs> I really think the Chiefs are just going to whoop up on them. Um, Patrick Mahomes still playing at a very elite level. Yeah, um, I think the Chiefs are going to cover the two point spread easily. Um, anytime the Chiefs lose to any sort of nail biter situation, it seems like that offense comes out just absolutely insane. I think Patrick Mahomes throws for 300 yards, four tutties, you know, like just goes absolutely berserk on Tampa and, Bay. Um, I really think that I was not high on Chiefs receivers. I really thought. You know, Chargers were going to win the division and possibly the Broncos and then third, the uh, Chiefs. But the Chiefs receivers, they're working out well. Mahomes, you know, main target is still Kelsey. Yeah, with all those young receivers around and then also with Juju, Juju is a guy that you can probably start in your fantasy teams, I but I, I don't know how great he can carry an offense. Like, he's going to get good stats. He's going to put up numbers, but he's not a guy that can change an offense. <clears throat> he's not like a Michael Pittman who comes in and no. automatically makes the offense look 100 times better. And uh, when are we going to see Sky Moore? I mean, We've seen guy... bits and flashes of him, but he's <laughs> I mean... dropping the ball. And that's making you just can't rookie do that. mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's got talent for sure. But Yeah, it, I just I still think that he could possibly be like this year's a Monroe St. Brown. Like, it's possible. Because last year at this time, a Monroe St. Brown was I think receiver one hundred, like mm -hmm. not doing well. I mean, nobody knew who he was. And, you know, we know how that ended up. And I was not high on him coming into this year. And I thought he was just, you know, not going to do the same things. And I was very wrong. Yeah. Um. Whenever Amon Ross St. Brown came out of his shell in, like, week 13, he became an absolute DraftKings hero for me. Every single week, he was underpriced, undervalued, and he would give me 20. And yeah, I, I, mean, I made it a point that I was going to draft him this year regardless. And it is... I, he's a league winner. I he's if you have him on your team, you're gonna go to the playoffs. So yeah, he uh, good job. I mean, it was priced between four thousand and fifty five hundred through that whole stretch. Yeah, just and he was insane. outscoring you know Devonte Adams, outscoring Tyreek Hill, outscoring all those guys, outscoring the six or seven thousand dollar receivers. Yeah, the seventy five hundred dollar receivers. Yeah, the big money guys. I mean, yeah, just crazy. He, he was the budget guy, and they never bumped him up because of the Lions offense. And I think that's going to change yeah. this year because the Lions are a playoff team. Lions are a playoff team. For yep. sure. heard it here first. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, Rams over the 49ers on Monday night. I'm not sure how the Rams are not the favorite to win this game. The Rams are either. a two-point underdog, and that honestly take the Rams money line. That is that that's a free square. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, free. the 49ers offense is not good. You've seen it against the Broncos. They they can't put up the Broncos defense. Nothing to scoff at, but they're not they're not great. Yeah, well, and uh, they just lost Trent Williams for I don't know how long. I didn't look. 
But uh, Trent yeah, well, he's not going to play best. against Aaron Donald in company, so it's yeah, no, not a it's, great it's look for be, the Niners. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping you know IU stay strong. Jeff Wilson, I've got a couple shares of those guys, um, but I definitely need them to do pretty well. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm staying far away. A um, uh, quick little sit for you. Cam Akers is a sit. I know we got a touchdown last week. Don't care. Sit them. Yeah, 49ers defense line is still good. I mean, you can't you can't say that, you know, all those guys aren't going to shut down Cam Akers coming off an Achilles injury last year. Yeah. And I don't know. There's Cooper Cup. It's going to be the Cooper Cup show. Yeah, for sure. Maybe a little sprinkle of Allen Robinson, but I'm just a hopeful. Yeah, um, that's all I got. got. That's all I got as well. Um, we can hit them with a quick outro and call it. Yeah, um, but uh, we're going to try to do this once a week. Uh, I think um, Tuesday nights we'll record, get it out there Wednesday. Um, but uh, my name's Brett, and thanks, guys. Yeah, I'm Dustin. Uh, yeah, the new episodes, hopefully every Wednesday, to get out so you guys can get in uh, your lineup, set everything by Thursday. But yeah, thanks for tuning in, y'all. Peace.